How to draw in SelfCAD. Hello everyone. In this video I'm going to explain SelfCAD's drawing functionality. But before I do so, I want to explain something which I'm not sure I had a chance to explain before, is that SelfCAD's tools follow a natural flow. It starts with uh, first create. You have features you, without creating something, there's very little you can do. And then once you create something, you have the most simplest things that you can do, which is move, rotate, scale, also known as transformations. And then you have deformations, which is also known as uh, nonlinear transformations. And then you go to the more advanced features like modify and then so on and so forth, going more advanced functionality. However, within this itself, within each section, so you think about create, you have split down to multiple things. So if you think about 3D shapes and create and, and generators and drawing, they all belong to the section of create stuff. And in that case, it also follows from simplicity first is the first from the left. So the easiest way to create something is using basic shapes. You can drag and drop them simply or clicking on them to customize them. The more advanced way is using shapes. This shape generator, for example, can be multiple part shapes and then you have these other more advanced features. So it belongs after the basic shapes. And then drawing is the last from the create section, which is the much more uh, advanced feature, how to create custom shapes. And within drawing itself, you have two options, which naturally freehand would be the more simpler uh, tool. So what I'm going to start is with freehand drawing. I have this shape actually that I just followed using this interact tutorial that I found on SelfCAD's website. And I'm actually downloaded this because every time you open it to play, it will create like a new project. So if you want to reuse it in the same project, you can simply download and upload. So that's what I did. So I'm going to go here to play tutorial and then I'm going to go load file. Ask me if I want to remove everything from the scene. I say yes. And I'm going to choose this toy rocket, which is it. And then it tells me to start tutorial. And you see it's going to activate freehand drawing. So I'm going to show you here and explain what it's doing, the main idea. So first of all, it's activating a tool. Uh, what you'd see here actually doesn't matter the order. You, you could have done the next step before the first one. But what you have over here is, first of all, you have over here the tool, kind of the brushes, the type of drawing that you have. Freehand drawing has something called a brush, which is, I'll show it in a minute, but that's unique to the freehand drawing. You're not going to find it in the 3D sketch. And then it has some other options over here. Now what it's going to do over here is it asks you to select the precision settings. And in precision settings, there's options what you want to snap to. So you can snap to other shapes. In this case, there's no shapes here. And you can snap to grid vertices. And in this case, grid vertices gives you an option for make precision. So you can kind of snap to these points. And obviously from the workspace settings, you can change the sizes of these points. And this allows you to create straight. Okay. So now it's going to draw here. It gives me the points. I'm just going to follow it. You draw a, um, this shape and the ellipse has basically a three point way to create something. So I click here to create the first shape and then the part over here. So I created this. Okay. So now this is basically just drawing a sketch. And if you see later in three, a 3D sketch, this follows the same logic in any software. If you draw this, how a sketch would look like. But here is where uh, freehand drawing is different than other drawing tools is that it has something it's called erase mode. You can turn on erase mode. Now it asks me to turn on erase mode. And then it's using still the same tool they have selected. It didn't change the tool, just switch the mode to erase mode. And now it's going to give another three point click to set that. And you can see it turns red before I finalize it's red because this is an eraser. And once I click on it, it automatically cuts it out. So if you think about it, it's similar to stitch and scoop, but this is live as you draw and it created this section. Now it's going to change the tool and ask me for a rectangle tool. And it's going to do while I'm still in the erase mode. And it's going to click here, click here, and then click here again. And it's just kind of a big box to cut off a piece and it cut off a piece. Now the reason this was so precise is because we followed the clicking on the snapping to grid vertices. So which means it's it's exact because it snapped to the grid vertices. And you see later that there's other options for precision. And mostly if you want to do precision, it's 3D sketch tool. But now all I have to do here is um, this tool doesn't allow me to do it, but there's an option over here to do the height settings. I'm probably not going to be able. Okay, yes. You see the default height is 20. That's the default. You can make it to zero and I'll show that in a moment. Uh, but the default would be 20. So if you click what's asking me now to finalize, it's going to just click to finalize and it created a mesh as it is. So 
This is something that you could have done it using basic shapes, 3D uh, shapes, and kind of use stitch and scoop, but it's obviously much easier, especially if you want to have precision, to do it this way. Now I'm just going to click next to show you a small thing, which is going to do now next, how it created a basic shape, and it just moved it in the position, and then it went to the Add the Details tool, Copy Offset, I mean Copy Offset tool, I'm sorry, and in Copy Offset there is an option called Pivot, and the Pivot tool is kind of makes a circle of pattern. It's very similar to the Revolve tool, which I made a video on, and it asks you to make three copies, and then just click Copy, and I basically created this basic shape, and then I'm Xing out. Okay, so I'm done with this, and you can see how this created these shapes over here, and then colored, and then created some other pieces and so on. So this is basically how I'm just going to finalize this drawing for now. So this is what the freehand drawing is doing, okay. Now to show you the additional features, I'm going to use now another tutorial. So I'm going to use here something that I found here, let's say this house, a floor plan. And this actually is using the reference image, which is very powerful for drawing in general, but specifically for freehand drawing. So you can just add an image, and in this case, let me, it's positioning the image first. So it's positioning it, scaling it, and okay, so now it goes to the uh, 3D sketch, and it's also going to solve the same problem we did in the previous example for precision, but it's going to use a different thing. Instead of going grid vertices, this is too complex, too details, there's no way you can use the grid vertices to solve this entire um, design. So what it's doing over here, it's going again to precision, but it's using something minimum angle step size. This means that once you start drawing something, you cannot move more than the whatever is defined over here. In this case, it's 15, that's the default. That's usually enough, but you can change it. So if just the hand is shivering a little bit or something straight, this will kind of make sure that you have to intentionally move it, otherwise it wouldn't work. There's something here, minimum angle step size. Once you turn it on, there's show measurements. Um, no, actually it's something else, okay. There's override step size. Oh, this is basically what I want to say. Override step size is where sometimes you want to snap to something and it's less than the minimum angle. So if you choose that, it will allow you to snap it. Okay. But anyways, it's going to use now a rectangle and it's going to start drawing the basic concept over here. But before, the way it draws here is it enters a value, an exact value. So this is where you have also precision. You have this, you can type in length, angle. Every tool has different settings that you can do, what you can type in. So here it asks me to type in 520. And the way it works is that once you type in the value, you kind of get a line that is fixed in size. This, the line can no longer be changed. And now it just needs to be positioned, so I can just click here to position it. And then it comes to width, it's doing the same thing. You type in 370, and it asks you not to click here. I think actually in the real drawing, you can just click enter, and that's it. But yeah, tutorial is kind of, it's going to give you a point where to click on. Um, okay, so and then it's going to do the same thing over and over and just kind of follow but look how this is actually gonna do over here so once you do this you click here you see that's automatically extended the cube is no the rectangle is no longer a rectangle already has the cut over here and the same is it going to be here with the entire thing you just enter values of everything and then you basically um, create a basic sketch okay so Now, there's no single way how you can draw something like this. Um, every designer has a different style and every design requires uh, a different approach. In this approach, the designers first created the entire outline, um, basically the basic big shape outside, and then uses the erase mode to create the sections. But even the erase mode is not complete. It's more bigger sections. And then it's going to use kind of erase from the eraser and then also to draw in. So you see over here, it's kind of first creating the basic shapes and it continues cutting out, but then it will start creating shapes over here, uh, still a little bit making the sections over here. And okay, so now you can see it actually erases from the eraser something. So basically it removes a piece so if you erase an eraser, the entire section becomes now black, which is kind of a solid. And then it erases from that as well. So this is how it created inside sections with precision. And again, this is just a style that this designer chose. It's, it's the flexibility that you can choose how to do it. And in fact, if you think about what's happening over here, as you see the red pieces are actually being moved away. 
So the way the designer did it is a way of creating uh, erased pieces and then removing this till you added up doing everything. And all of this is just because you needed to have the thickness of the line. So how do you add the thickness of the line? And this is actually where the brush mode can actually help. Um, in some cases, the brush mode would be much easier to do something like this. You don't have to create the inner erase piece. Now you can see the entire thing here was everything using rectangle and everything is closed so there's no problem but now you can no longer use a rectangle so it turned down the line drawing but when it comes to the line drawing you actually have to make it also a closed shape so what happened over here is that you basically draw this and then you basically close it okay now to finalize it it just goes into the drawing mode and it selects another rectangle and it fills in the missing pieces here simply uh, filling in stuff and then it finalizes and it creates the entire shape so now what i'm going to do here is i'm going to uh, go to the reference image i'm going to hide it away you can see it uh, so you can bas basically see the shape and this is basically how it's done so to create something like this with normal drawing would take much more time or if you take basic shapes and this is where the freehand drawing is really helpful now I want to show you how the same idea could be done with the brush mode and show you the difference. So I'm going to hide away this shape and I'm going to bring back the reference image and I'm turning on back to the 3D sketch mode. So in this case, what I'm going, not 3D sketch, I'm sorry, to free and drawing. And in this case, I'm going to go to the brush mode and uh, all right here, Alan, okay. So I have to decide which size I have to do. So first of all, if I'm going to draw here, for, this is a circle, I don't want. So you can see the brush actually looks like a circle. So what I need is I need a square, okay? So I can see a square and then I can bring down the size, something that will actually make sense. So if I click over here, this looks like approximately the same size. So now if you see, if I draw over here, this actually is gonna give me the size. Now I have to escape. Now, if I wanna do it exactly over here, I'll have to make smaller sizes and I have to, even here it's a shorter size. So maybe this is why the designer has chosen this idea over here, but Places that I can, I can just kind of make this section and let's say if I'm going to make the section over here and or let's say the section over here so I can kind of just move it up and something like that and move it like this and something like this. So I'm not going to continue the entire thing just to finalize, just show you the idea. But in this case, you can see I kind of, if I use the minimum angle step size, allow me to draw straight and I can trace it. Uh, in this particular case, you have different thickness for everything so maybe the approach the designer took is faster uh, but that's basically the idea okay so now what I want to show you here is um, another idea while this is hidden I'm gonna move away again I can actually delete already the reference image and what I'm going to do here is I'm gonna enter again the freehand drawing and I'm going to um, drag and drop this and you see over here what happened is we get this sketch if I finalize it now I got basically the image again now we have two okay so to explain what's happening here so in general you can drag and drop everything you can drag and drop shapes and you can drag and drop any object to make a copy but if you are within the freehand drawing drag and drop from anything let's say if i drag and drop a, a cube it will turn it into a um it will turn in a rectangle this and this will turn in a circle and even a sphere will turn it into a circle because it projects everything 2d so kind of like from top down, think about it, is what is the biggest size? It could be in a 2D shape, and that's basically how it's done. And similarly, any shape will be, but this is a shape that I can drag and drop, or I can double click on it, and then it will position it where it was positioned before, and so on. And in this case, I wanna show you here also that I said before, that there's an option to um, change the height setting. So the default is 20, obviously you can make it more, but I can also turn it into zero. If I turn it to zero, I'll basically going to get a profile. It's actually even named profile. I can rename it, but it by default, it's named as a profile. Now, once I have a profile, there's different ways to convert this into a mesh. The most simplest way is using extrusion, and you can basically extrude that, which is the same thing that this thing would do. So you can actually draw a profile in freehand drawing by simply setting the height settings different. And in some cases, you can you know turn it off, do something like this, but this is again, more advanced features of when and how you want to do that. Okay. Um, the other thing that is important to note is in freehand drawing, that's interesting to show is, okay, let me turn back on actually, um, I can bring back this shape. Okay. So I'm going to drag and drop this. And what we have over here, there's an other mode. So I used before the draw in the erase mode, 
now we're going to use the move point mode and i'll explain why this is so free and drawing is something that is doing live boolean operation basically it's called like stitch and scoop but it's done in uh, 2d and it's much faster and it's real uh, live as you draw and so on and because of that it it means it's it's kind of like in its own application it's like a 2d application uh, so it cannot interact with the 3d functionality so everything is blocked it's the same idea as you have in sculpting sculpting is like its own application same thing drawing i think it's the only two tools that it's like complete tools i mean you have like while your image in 3d i think it's blocked many tools while you're in it it's blocked but um, 3d sketch basically is a part of the application you can use it i'll show you soon so over here if you do need to move something let's say you need to adjust something you simply drag and drop and go to the move points mode and so on and now it stays selected so if, if i move this it stays selected i have to click a deselect if i click one i can move only this now it stays selected i have to deselect otherwise it will select plus two and then it will move both of them at the same time and so on um, so this is mainly the way it works another important thing is for the same fact that it's a, a 2d drawing is that you can only draw in 2d um, so let me show you what i mean so when you go to plane setting um, actually over here is plane settings and in plane settings you can choose the top bottom plane or you can add another plane let's say if i add this plane okay so once i add this plane um, you can actually start drawing on this plane Okay, so let's say if I draw on this plane, and I can also draw, and I press escape, I can also draw on this plane. And in this case, this is no problem. I can draw both planes. But I cannot draw from connecting this to this. Okay, so there's no way I can connect these two things because the drawing can only be on one plane at a time. If I draw on two separate planes, they're not connected. It will finalize each one individually as it is without a problem, but you cannot connect them. And this is actually where 3D Sketch is much better because you can draw technically anywhere and, and like literally in thin air as long as you have something to snap to so you can make the drawing uh, finally i want to show you the idea of patterns so actually you can choose a pattern so let's say if i draw a rectangle like this i can then decide to fill it with the pattern let's say i want to draw let's say inside to here a pattern or maybe erase mode i think would be better and i can kind of fill this with a pattern like this okay so now you have a pattern if I finalize this, it will finalize it. So you can use over here the pattern. We have just a few patterns available. Um, there is none or is text or star or pattern, whatever. But you can also go select an SVG and upload your own pattern and then use scale features. So if I finalize this, I actually get this pattern over here, which is quite nice. And if you can upload your own SVG, this is quite powerful. Um, so that's basically it for freehand drawing. It's more an artistic tool. It's used a lot simply especially using the brush mode to simply trace images and create stuff um, and it's used a lot of other features um, okay i think this is uh, quite a long video already so this should be it for this video i hope in the next video to explain 3d sketch together with some other more advanced features how to create a mesh using a sketch okay thanks for watching and let me know please in the comments if you want me to explain anything else take care bye